diving in today. We've got uh, today we've got Fiona Clark from Breakthrough Business Solutions. Uh, Fiona is a business growth specialist, and she has dialed in to talk to us about um, how small and medium businesses might have seen an effect on their business during the COVID nineteen lockdown, and what they can do. And we're just gonna have a good chat about uh, business owners and their plans going forward. So thanks, Fiona, for dialing in. Right. Well, thanks for having me this morning. Brilliant. So, hey, in your experience just recently, what has um, the small and medium business area seen in terms of changes to their business and what, what's the effect been, basically? Mm, gosh, there's been an awful lot of change and, you know, very quick change as well. So literally within the, you know, the last four weeks, so much has happened. So, but what's really interesting is that it's impacting businesses in different ways. So for some companies, their doors are literally shut and they can't trade at all and their business has ground to a complete halt. You know, for others, they might still be able to um, be doing some form of business, but it's quite limited, you know, in product range or services. But you know what, there's also other businesses that are booming right now and they're struggling to keep up. So it is different things for different people. And I think that's what's really um, interesting but challenging as well. So, you know, I've, I talk, I'm with business owners um, all day, every day, and, and this is, you know, what I do, working with small to medium businesses. But for some, it, it is also, it's very individual. So, you know, it's quite overwhelming and stressful for a lot of people, especially financially, when you haven't got any money coming in. And it's also stressful for, for others, but we handle things in, in different ways too. So I think that's where um, we, we're getting a lot in the media about, you know, all the uh, there's a lot of negativity and, and yeah, and there's a lot of reporting out there. But one of the things that I say to, to my clients as well is just to be careful how much we're consuming about that and how much we're really kind of taking on board because we often know what the problems are. Uh, one of the key things I'm really passionate about working with um, my clients is really how we get through this. Um, so it's what can we do? And, and you know, I've, I've got some things I'd love to share around that as well, but how can we keep really positive around this? Yeah, well, and that's one of the hardest things, right? Is when, when money's hemorrhaging out of your business or it's flowing out of your business at a rate that previously it wasn't, the, the kind of the best thing is to maybe spend a bit more on marketing or, or, or invest a bit more in that sort of brand awareness. And that, that's often a, a really hard thing to wrap your head around as a business owner, right? And it's, yeah, it's really hard. It's um, because you, you know, you often think, well, you've got to stop spending completely, mm. you know. Um, but this is where, and I know sometimes it's hard to kind of wrap that head around it, but it really is looking at what you can do and how can you keep visible right now. So, but you know, there are some things that we can do, and this means going on online and being a lot more active online, but there's some things that we can do that are free. Uh, that don't have to cost the use around that. So, you know, from a business point of view, one of the things is, of course, to watch your expenses, look at what you can cut back on, you know, really being um, prudent financially around that. Um, there's been a lot of information around where you can go for help around, you know, um, money and funding. And of course, you want to be getting into your bank, you know, and looking at what you look at what you need in your company right now. But from being visible as well, and from that marketing side, this is where you do want to market more. And someone said to me the other day as well, is that you need to tell people you're still here. You need to actually just even get out on Facebook or Instagram and get out in your mailing list to your clients is communicating to people. You are still here. You are still afloat. You are, you know, you want to check in with them. You know, are your customers okay? And you actually want to be um, protecting your business and making sure that um, you are going to still be um, emerging strongly from this, which means we need to be seen, we need to be visible, and we need to get out there. And remember, it doesn't have to cost you to do that. Wow, I mean, social media has made that, that ability to get broadcast to the masses for nothing, essentially, uh, so achievable, hasn't it? So it's, it's really good. Hey, and so... Um, in terms of how to keep focused during this this era, how what are some tips that you've got for business owners um, to keep focused during the lockdown, or maybe just slightly after the lockdown? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think one of the the key things is to really focus positively on what you can do. So there's kind of um, and it literally is that question: What can you do right now? What can you control? Because there's a lot that's happening out there that we can't. It's completely outside our control, you know, and you know, we, we know, but you know what, we're going to get through this. We know we're getting through this. We've been in tough times before, and there's going to be tough times in the future as well. 
but it's what can we do or what can you do for your business to um, remain strong and I think this comes down to us as well mindset so this is where um, it is limiting how much we're absorbing you know from social media or the news um, instead of scrolling through Facebook all the time looking at what our, our latest numbers are is maybe tuning in once or twice a day um, but really now pulling back and really focusing and being laser focused on you and your company um, what can you be doing keep yourself strong mentally um, you know, it's these words resilient and being adaptable and change. We, we're in such a huge period of change right now, but we need to go with it. So what can you do is really pull back on what you're consuming. And, you know, it's working on the business. It's we have, I was going to say we have time, but some people have time and others are, you know, it just feels like we're on Zoom or we're online, you know, a lot all the time. <laughs> but, you know, there's, um, uh, there's things that, yeah, and I'll, I'll chat around about looking at your products and services and, and how you need to pivot. So first, first up is pull back, really focus, um, block out and protect your time and really work on keeping really positive. If we're positive here, this is going to help us really map out and plan out how we're going to come out of this. Hey, let's talk a bit more about that. Networking groups, because I've noticed a rise in, in sort of the, the well, the bond of that and the use of that. And I know you belong to uh, a couple of groups and, and I, I belong to some. And, and, and so um, I, mean, I think there's a real value in there in terms of just talking to other business owners who are going through the same thing, uh, maybe sharing some stories about how others have pivoted or, or gone online um, in an easy kind of way. Is, is that your kind of experience with your clients? Yeah, absolutely. Right now, we want to stay connected with people because we're at home and it's, um, we can feel a bit isolated. Um, however, with technology, this is a great thing. We have to use it now. We're using it way more than what we did before. So, you know, you can have, we can be here in a Zoom type meeting, but you can have 10 people. You know, you can have 20 people on this. But I think when you hear from other people and it is that support, so, you know, one thing I would say to people is reach out, is don't sit back and be, you don't have to go through this alone. There are plenty of people who are here and willing and wanting to support others as well. So it is reaching out to people and networking groups are great. Um, it is, you know, it's not only great for, for business and before COVID-19, um, but it is also, like you say, is hearing that other people are going through this too and learning from what they are doing. Um, and taking all the good from there. And it literally also is, you know, um, don't underestimate the, you know, the amount of support that you can, you can get from others. Um, because, yeah, there's plenty of other small business owners who are going through this at the same time with you. Yeah, and, and that's the beauty of those groups is they are a group of people with quite similar problems. So you've got your friend circle who some might be employed or, or you know, not, not too worried about it. But I think a group of self-employed people will give you some perspective on, you know, you're not the only one who's, who's having trouble and, and going through things. So I really like that point of view for self-employed people in this, this type of environment, really. Yeah. Hey, so let's dig a bit deeper on product and services and maybe what people could do to, to get online or, or, or pivot if they have to. And, and just talk a bit about that if you can. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so one of the things that, um, that I kind of like to do, I've kind of... Um, I kind of have broken it down into review, pivot, and recovery. It's kind of like three key steps to be thinking about right now. So before we jump into looking around what we can do to pivot in our business, I think it's really good to just take a step back, first of all, and think, okay, let's review things. What's, what's happened? What's happened very quickly in, in these four weeks? I think for the, the first week, yes, it was such a, a bit of a shock, even though we kind of knew it was coming, it happened very quickly. Um, and then now we're used to it, you know, we're, um, we're coming into the level three next week that will make some changes again. Um, but it's really reviewing what's happened in your business. Um, are your doors shut completely? What products that might have been your good sellers previous to this are now not needed or not wanted so much anymore? We need to get a real kind of feel. The landscape has changed. The environment's changed. Your customers what's important to them is very different in four weeks as well. So how you were coming into this is going to be different to how you are coming out of this. So your products and services, the real kind of key thing we want to be looking at is what do your customers need? What do they need and what are they wanting right now? And so this will help guide you around how to pivot. So, you know, when we're looking at um, your sales that might have dried up, um, might also be, 
you know, is it something we're going to need? Is price going to be a challenge? Is delivery going to be an issue? How are you going to deliver your products or services now? And this is where going online comes into it. Because say if you were doing a lot of face-to-face -face meetings previously, this is the wonders around Zoom or around <clears throat> online communication now. We can, you can work with anyone around the world. This is what's so good about this. So, you know, it's really adapting and, and jumping on board with this technology. We're needing to do it now. One thing I was, um, I was just thinking around too is it'd be really good when we do come through this to just be a little bit mindful not to jump back to how we were. Because, <laughs> because if you're using technology really well and it's working for you, then keep doing what's working. You know, and it's here to, it's making things faster and efficient and streamlining what we do as well. One of the silver lining for, for our industry is that uh, six months ago, if we'd said, hey, would you like to meet on a Zoom room? 50% uh, of people would have said, like, you know, what, what's that? And how do I install that kind of thing? And now, <laughs> now it's forced the entire world to install Zoom or Skype onto their computer. So we're going to be a lot more efficient with our meetings and things. And so, yeah, we're really looking forward to that, that future yeah. Uh, yeah. position. And, and, and the banks have adjusted too to online meetings where people have worked for four or five years to try and get, you know, our online meetings okay and how do we feel about this? And within a week it was signed off. So I think you're absolutely right. The, the industry has changed and for the better and, and we certainly won't be... Um, Going back to how we did it, yeah. Have you got any examples? I mean, I, I would talk to one client of mine who's a, a landscaper. Um, I rung them up and said, hey, how are you doing? You know, we're talking about mortgages and things. And she said, she's booming. Because essentially, people who were going to Europe uh, are not going to Europe. And that money is being funneled into the place where they're going to potentially spend the next year, which is their home, right? So... So renovations, landscapers and things. Uh, and, and I thought that was quite a, a twist on, you know, I thought everyone was, would be retrenching their money and just holding on to it, but they're, they're upgrading their house. And so have you, have you got any examples of, of clients that have, have pivoted in quite a, quite a unique way? I know I'm throwing that at you. We didn't discuss that beforehand. But... <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely. And I think that's a really good point is to remember there is still money flowing. There is money in the economy right now. So, you know, while it is, like I say, it's impacting some, it's looking at, okay, how can you turn this into an opportunity for you? And where is the opportunity? So where, where are the industries that are going to recover faster? And how can you offer a work with, with some of those as well? So, you know, when we look at, um, actually, let's talk a bit about pivoting because, um, you know, you might've heard a bit about pivoting and it's been, you know, it's quite a word at the moment that, um, you know, it's been used a lot. But really what we're looking at, again, is how to adapt and how to change. And what do you need to do? And so that's why I'm saying instead of rushing into changing your business, is just take a breather, take that step back, and actually look strategically at it before you, you race in and tactically change your product and service offerings. But yes, isn't that amazing how that created opportunity for that landscape gardener as well? So um, an example is, um, for example, interior designers. Now you would often traditionally, they need to go and see a space to then be able to um, measure and plan and look at what they can create in that. Now we can actually um, use FaceTime, use you know, technology and show people that space, even while we're in lockdown. You know, so you know, I've got some clients who are doing great things, who then are still able to plan, are still able then to do all the discussion and all the, the pre-work beforehand. So now when we can come down to be working together again, um, they're one step ahead. And it's, and it's things like that. It's things like face-to-face -face kind of meetings, taking that online. We, we've seen a lot as well, you know, um, somebody that I know who um, has a yoga studio, who instead of in-person yoga is now um, doing online, you know, classes. Great. Other things to repackage. This is something to really be thinking around, whether it's, um, especially in the service industry. Say, for example, you have a, a normal six or 12 months program that you might be working through with a client. Right now, people are short-term focused. So they're not so much focused on what's going to happen 12 months down the track. But if you can repackage that to a 90-day program or a six-week program, and this is short, sharp, this is what you're going to get, this is how we're going to help you, and this is how it's going to benefit you. People are much more um, open to that as well. And also really thinking around people's price points. So 
you know, um, your high value um, products or services. Now, in some instances, the, the opportunity is still there, but it could be an idea to keep that, don't lose that, but maybe have an offering that's a lower price point, that's a smaller offering, so you're not discounting what you're doing, you're offering something a bit different that makes it uh, more doable and achievable, you know, for clients to do business with you as well. So, so it's not about completely changing your business, although that we've heard those wonderful stories about people who are now creating hand sanitizer and masks and 3D printing and things, which is fantastic. But on a smaller scale then, it's right, okay, what can I do? What do my customers need? How can I adapt and change? How can I still bring in income, but make it doable for my customer to do business with me as well? Yeah, I think the um, people are going to be a little more hesitant to release a large sum of money. If you've got a $10,000 course, you know, it's, it's uh, people are going to be a little more hesitant around that and, and like having that lower or maybe shorter amount, the smaller amount of bite-sized chunks that they can then bite away at as they're more comfortable with their income is a great thing. And yeah, the um, knowing what the world is going to look like in 12 months is, is basically anyone's guess, right? Are our borders mm -hmm. open? So a 12-month uh, course might be a little long, whereas a we could guess what six weeks might look like from here. So it's much more achievable. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Hey, um, thank you. I, I think the um, the buy local, uh, I mean, the New Zealand government spent millions and millions on buy local, buy New Zealand made in the 90s, right? And and suddenly within sort of four weeks, that resurgence has, has come up again. And it's, it's here. So I think um, you can really uh, work around that. Just make sure that, that business owners are, you know, telling people that they're still still open. Um, Facebook, what, what's your favorite social media platform? Is it, is it dependent on your business, do you think, or uh, some good generic ones? Yeah, I mean, um, it does depend on your customer base and age and, and where, where they are. Um, I, you know, probably Facebook and Instagram, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a, is a great one as well, um, which is adding a lot of value. Um, and you know nothing also um, there's nothing better than communicating directly with your clients too so you know um, online marketing e-newsletters getting in front of your customers so but it does depend where where they're at but I think um, just coming back to what you're saying about buying local this is such a good time for us to support each other we want to support each other and we do want to buy uh, local products and services so we can keep the money in the local economy too because you want people to buy from you as well. Um, I know it's been said, um, but it is, it is a great thing too to be um, trying to pay our bills on time um, and try and, you know, um, and help other companies in that way. Um, but yes, there is wonderful local businesses, even travel, travel domestically, which we which is what we will be doing when we're able to do that, you know, as well. And, you know, you might have heard of, um, there's a great initiative that was set up um, to support hospitality or some of the cafes called SOS Cafe. Fabulous website. I love it. I love that website. Yeah. 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 So you can buy a voucher. You can support your local cafe, buy coffees, um, buy those vouchers and you can redeem them when they open again. So, you know, companies can also be looking at what vouchers can they be um you know, can they be offering their clients as well? So this is a great way to also try and get pre-orders, get pre-order of your products and services. So when you can deliver those, um, you know, those customers and clients are your first clients. Um, so they're supporting you and you're also supporting them as well. So um, absolutely that um, go local is, is really important. And it feels good, it feels good to support um, local, you know, clients too. So if you were telling your clients, you know, the, uh, as business owner at the moment is a little nervous, a little uh, paralysed by what's going on, what would be the first step that they would take to? Yeah, to, to get through this, I think is um, one of the key things I would probably say is get help or get somebody to help you walk walk through this um, now there's so much help in so many different ways um, either from um, a business person or, you know a business person who's in business um, who understands where you're coming from uh, there is free help out there there is um, supported help there you know but sometimes having somebody to help you see things from the outside um, is actually so valuable because we get quite emotionally tied to our companies um, actually, there's a wee strategy that I, I gave on a, um, I've given a live webinar last week, and this seemed to be quite popular. 
because we're so um, entrenched and um, connected with our businesses and there's a lot of things happening and um, a really good thing when you're trying to see your own company through different eyes is to maybe take that step back and think if this was a friend's business if this wasn't my company, but this was someone that I knew and really kind of cared about, and I could see this business from the outside, what would I be recommending or what would I be helping to discuss, you know, or work through, you know, with that person? When you can kind of separate yourself a wee bit and you can see it objectively, things jump out at you and you're like, gosh, I should be doing that. That's an opportunity. And that really kind of helps you to um, see things a lot more clearly. But I would also say, put your hand up, go and find help. Don't do this. Don't feel you have to sit back and, and try and work things all out on your own. There are plenty of people who can really step up and help you. I know I do that all the time. I say to, say to you know, fellow business owners, oh, you, you should do this. And I think to myself, oh, I'm not doing that. What? <laughs> I should do that too. <laughs> and of course, you know, <laughs> it gets lost in my to-do list. Yeah. Hey, but yeah. let's talk about Atted um, courses uh, in the Auckland area. Uh, you, you are, oh, I'm going to get my, my registered provider. Is that the way we're going to put it? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so AT or um, regional business partners is yes. I'm a registered provider for them, which means people can apply for funding to work with me. Um, but something that's really, really great that has come out recently is regional business partners have funding um, now to really help specifically businesses with COVID nineteen. This is new that has just recently been introduced, and this means that people can apply for funding, and it's one hundred percent funded. So no cost to um, the business owner. Um, it's up to $2,000. It is if you fit the criteria. But some of the criteria is that um, you have less than 50 employees. So you do need to have employees. Um, that the company was sound prior to COVID-19. Um, you want some help and support you know, to get through this. And, and I think their, um, their kind of philosophy, and, and so is, is mine and, and all of ours really, is to keep Kiwi businesses in business and to help keep employees um, in jobs. And that is so important to, you know, to the economy right now as well. So you know, if anybody um, does want some help or support, um, you know, do absolutely tap into that. And um, I can give you, the, you know, um, some details around that as well, because yeah, this is where we say there is help. It is a streamlined process, so it is, it is easy to apply for. Um, and yeah, it's there to um, help businesses stay in business, which is very important. And we've got a couple of various sort of YouTube Facebook channels. We'll put a link uh, below this video so that people can easily get there. And and yeah, it, it's a really important and an amazing service for um, for, for business owners. Um, it's, if, if you're a business owner and you don't know, in the Auckland area, you don't know about it, it is, it, it is an amazing service. So yeah, really good to get access to that. Yeah. All right, thanks for that, Fiona. That's, uh, that's great. So uh, tell me your website. Is it bbsolutions.co.nz? Is that right? Yep, yes, that is. Yep, so that's short for Breakthrough Business Solutions. So, yes. Exactly. And, uh, and you're on Facebook. Um, I'm on Facebook under Breakthrough Business Solutions. Yep. Um, so that's a good way to connect with me. Uh, and also, yep, through my website. Um, and just probably one last thing I'll probably just say around um, really to help companies right now is just remember that the ultimate thing to coming through this is recovery and it's how to have a plan as you come out of this. You've got to have um, a strategy and some steps to be um, emerging out the other side. And so this is where doing something like going through this process with regional business partners. And that's something that um, I'm approved in as business continuity planning and recovery. So exactly this. And so, yeah, we want to be not only getting through it, but we want to be emerging out stronger, um, resilient and finding new opportunities out the other side. All right. Hey, thanks for your time today. It's been an amazing chat and uh, look forward to talking to you soon.